It's no secret that the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is the top of Samsung's productivity capable smartphones. But how much of it do you really know about? Yeah, sure it's got the big screen to help you see more and do more and get more stuff done. But there are so many other things that you could know about with this phone that it's impossible to know everything, unless you're me. Today, we demonstrate every single way that you can be productive using the very unique form factor of the Galaxy Z Fold 5. Let's go. This video is packed, so we're going to get straight into it. Starting with the S Pen. The S Pen is a separate accessory for the Galaxy Z Fold 5. They haven't yet found a way to input it into it, which is a shame. I'd really love for that to happen eventually. But right now, the solution is an external pen. Samsung have definitely made strides in making this way slimmer than the previous generations. You can see here the difference between the Fold 4 S Pen and the Fold 5 S Pen. It's definitely gone on a diet. You can just buy the pen separately, like I have here, or you can get the S Pen specific case, which now, like I said, is a lot slimmer and fits and clips on to the back and comes out like that. Depending on, on how you like to use the pen will be how you go about it. Either way, they have the same functionality. When it comes to the S Pen and when it comes to Fold 5 and using the S Pen, you can only use the inner display. So I'm just gonna cover off a few of the features that I really like to take advantage of using the pen. The first is Smart Select. And what I really like with Smart Select is not only can you clip certain parts of the screen and the display and then save it, and then you also have the opportunity to for it to have recognition of, of object size, so it clips to that as well, but also the text recognition where you can use Smart Select to actually have text being selected and copy and paste that text out of something you previously maybe couldn't do. Of course, you have Samsung Notes with S Pen as well. And I really like screen off memo, just when the screen is off or locked, which won't happen as much on the fold, but you might get that odd instance. You can just quickly launch a note from the from the lock screen and write down whatever it is you need to do. And then that does automatically save and transition into Samsung Notes anyway. Samsung Notes has also got incredibly intelligent at handwriting recognition. I do have a full video on both the S Pen and a full video on Samsung Notes. So you can go check both of those out, but just know that the experience you get from both of those videos is present here on the Fold 5. What's unique about the Fold 5 though is of course, it folds in half. Where you could take advantage of this with the S Pen is you can have Samsung Notes down the bottom and a video playing at the top and use the S Pen to write down some notes from the video that's playing. It really does allow you that capability of being able to do those two things at once and kind of have like a notebook at the bottom and your screen at the top, you can do your notes for your uni assignment or whatever it is that you need to do. What else is really good with S Pen in general is the fact that you can sign documents. And UPDF is an app that I've just started using that allows me to sign and annotate directly on PDFs. The S Pen and UPDF's easy to use minimalist user interface and fast editing capability makes for the perfect combination. UPDF allows you to read PDFs and organize them on your device, edit them, sign them, and fill out necessary forms as needed. The great thing is it's also cross-platform. So you can do all of this on your Tab S9 as well as your Fold 5. With UPDF Cloud, you can actually upload your documents to that cloud storage and then you download the PC program. The PC program has even more capability. It allows you to convert documents into searchable and editable text using its OCR plugin. Further to that too, is if you do have a document that you wish to export to Microsoft Word, for example, so you can edit it, you really have that opportunity straight from UPDF's Pro version. But the best part about it is if you don't need those features, it doesn't need to be expensive. For the majority of users, the free version of UPDF will meet your needs and demands. However, if you find that you might need to convert files and save documents without watermarks, you can upgrade to UPDF Pro. You will find the pricing very competitive and affordable if you choose to do so, as you can see on the screen here, compared to its competitors, Adobe. UPDF have kindly given an exclusive offer for you to take advantage of. So please check out the link in the description for your exclusive offer. And thank you to UPDF for sponsoring this video. The taskbar has been a revelation since it was announced on this Galaxy Z Fold 4 just a year ago. A permanent dock that sits down there at the bottom of your screen to help you quickly jump back and forth between your most used and favorite apps so you can get more stuff done 
without the barrier of having to go and search for the app that you need to use. Let's go right through the process of setting this up and customizing it so you know how to do it on your Z Fold 5. First thing you need to do is you need to go into the display settings of the phone and go and turn taskbar on. I think you'll find that you probably will have this on by default, so you don't necessarily have to, but just in case, go in here and this is where it is. The new taskbar on the Z Fold 5 allows you to set up to four recent apps down there at the bottom. However, if you don't like how cluttered or how many apps end up being down the bottom there, you can turn this section off altogether. However, just know you have between two and up to four recent apps that you could have permanently there at all times. Now, the way it works is just, it knows what your recent app is and it will constantly change. And it's like, it's very fluid. It changes depending on the apps that you're using. The permanent side of the taskbar, that is something you can customize to what you desire. Now, these pull the apps that are on your dock at the bottom of your display on your home screen. So those apps that are sitting there that are permanent, this is what will formulate part of your taskbar. So swap and interchange out these apps from here. It can give you up to eight apps that you can store and dock permanently down at the bottom. If you do want to add more, you can't, but Samsung do give you a little app drawer on the bottom left-hand side. So if there's an app that you infrequently access, you can go into here and you'll see all your apps are displayed in that little app window down the bottom left corner. From there, you can open apps from that and you can also drag them into multi-window if you like. We'll get to multi-window a little bit later. From the taskbar itself, you can drag apps into place into that multi-window environment, or you can drag them into a pop-up view. Dragging them into a pop-up view, you now have the option to swiftly send it to a dock on the side. So if you're not finished with the app, you can dock it in this little tab and it'll permanently sit there until you're ready to drag it back out and use it again. Really great for messaging apps in particular, but you can use it for any. Anything that can support pop-up window can go dock over there. What you can also do is create a pairing or a trio of apps that you can launch into the multi-window environment all together at the same time. Now I'll show you that process of creating the app pairings later, but just know that you can actually have them stored in the dock of your taskbar so you can launch them all at the same time straight from there. If, for example, you don't need the taskbar for a certain set of actions that you're doing or performing, you can hide it temporarily. All you need to do is simply long press on the taskbar area and it will submerge it away from view. And then to bring it back, you perform the same action. Another long press in the taskbar area and it'll reappear. Since the original Galaxy Fold, three app multitasking has been the cornerstone of the foldable experience. Three apps organized on the display to take advantage of that 7.6 or at least 7.3 inch Galaxy Fold original display that you had access to. Of course, as time has evolved, so has the experience that the Galaxy Fold series can offer you. Three app multitasking still formulates a big chunk of the experience that's on offer. The format and the way you interact with the three apps, that has definitely also evolved. So let's go through some ways you can do that. First thing is how to activate multi-window. Samsung has innovated this and created it a much less restrictive way of getting into multi-windows experience. You can two finger swipe from the sides or from any app that you're in, and it'll bring up a little tab or a little window to show you the apps that you can bring into that multi-window environment. You can also drag it in from the edge panel, drag and drop, as you can do from the taskbar. Once you are in multi-window, you'll see at the top, you have the little multi-window sort of button that you can press. This also gives you some extra options that you can do whilst in multi-window. You can go and open another app. You can activate your app straight into a pop-up view. Or if you drag the handle, you can actually drag the app into another position and pop up or another position within the multi-window environment to move it around. The animations are also quite fluid. I really like it. When you have multiple apps open, you'll see there's a little three dots that separate right in the middle all of the environment. You can use this to drag in the slider left and right so you can reposition the apps on the display. Or if you press on it, you'll see as well, you can change the layout of multi-window straight from that little menu that pops up. You can also do a lot of other things from here as well, including creating your app pairings. This is what I was talking about before. So this little star button, it's like a favorite. You can favorite a certain number of apps that you have open and whether it's three, whether it's two, you can choose where to place it. So you can add it to the edge panels, you can add it to your home screen, or you can just add it straight to your taskbar. And then that way it's permanently docked there. So if you've got apps that you use all the time, this could be a really great way of accessing them quickly. Also, what's kind of cool is if you close all the apps just by swiping out of it, it will hold it in the recent apps as a trio. 
So you don't lose and go separate it into three separate apps. It holds it in that form. I think it's really neat. What multi-window is also really great for is dragging and dropping between different things. So if you want to drag a file into a notes file, for example, Samsung has it made it a lot easier now to do this with its new interaction system of holding down and using the other finger to change apps and stuff like that. So they've made it a lot easier in a lot of different ways, but in the multi-window environment, that's a really good thing to do. Seldom gets talked about is when you have the apps all open at once. If you take a screenshot, it will actually capture all three screens individually, and then you can click on them and edit them. I really like this because you can drag it and open it in a separate gallery window and go to edit it straight away, or even just drag a screenshot of like a website and drag it straight into a message. Really cool. The other big advantage to having this big inner display is that you can optimize apps for like a tablet view because it's effectively a tablet. Samsung has worked tirelessly with partners and internally to optimize applications to suit that inner display. Some of them, uh, they're getting there in terms of they actually now will go into the full screen, but they don't quite have the optimizations yet. But there are a lot of apps now that are coming on board the more foldables are becoming mainstream. You firstly need to have this enabled in the settings, but I do believe it is there by default. It's in display settings under screen layout and zoom, and you've got the two options there to have multi-view or standard view. Obviously choose multi-view. Some apps to look out for that support this, you have Outlook, WhatsApp, Telegram, Samsung Notes, Phone App, My Files, Spotify, Settings, and a lot more. Plenty more. They're just ones that I noticed pretty much immediately. There'll be a lot more that you'll notice, but it just makes for a, a better interaction when you're going into these apps. The last productivity point that is specific to the Fold 5 is Flex Mode, and more specifically, Flex Mode Panel. This is what happens to the phone when it's in its half folded state. So when the phone isn't all the way closed or isn't all the way open, propped up at that 90 degree angle. There are so many apps now when you go through the flex mode panel list that actually have a default and custom version of their own flex mode. You'll see it when you go into the flex mode panel list, it tells you which apps already have one optimized for the foldable display. But if they don't, Samsung has developed flex mode panel. When we take a look at flex mode panel in action, you'll see a number of different ways you can interact with it. So for example, what I have what I have showing you here is Spotify. Now obviously Spotify is not a productivity app, but it does play music. So it's a good example to show you everything because with a music and media app, you get the media controls that you can interact with, scrub through the, the thing. You have the 10 seconds forwarding, forward and rewinding. You can control volume from here. It's all there. But there's other stuff within Flexmo panel that isn't just media. You can activate a touchpad. Genius. Basically turns it into like this mini tiny laptop that you can control with a cursor and a mouse. So you use this touchpad and also with the touchpad, you have some gesture controls. I have spoken about these in the past in my hands-on video back when the Fold 5 came out at announcement, but they're still equally as fun to use and you still have access to be able to do some different gestures to activate different things. You've got the ability to take a screenshot directly from here. You have the ability to add another app into flex mode down the bottom. That could work really well for Samsung Notes when you're taking notes of things that I demonstrated earlier on in the video. If you get a notification, you can bring down the notification panel. So it's just a really neat way of taking advantage of act interacting with your phone in a lot more natural way when it's in that half flexed flex mode state. What else is really cool is flex mode works inside camera. So if you're a content creator and that's your business, flex mode can be a really good thing to take advantage of because you have a tripod to carry around with you everywhere you go. I'm going to save that for a future video that I have planned where I cover everything that you can do with the Fold 5's camera. The Fold 5 is the new productivity king. Let me know in the comments which one of these productivity features that you would most likely use yourself or if there's any others that you think I missed. Chuck them down in the comments below. Make sure you guys like this video. Come subscribe as well. I've got plenty of content just like this already on the channel and a lot more to come. Don't want to miss it. Between now and my next video, make sure you come hang out with me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Yo!